Eagles and the Pelicans have always met on the field of battle. What makes this rivalry even more interesting that over the years, we now have Eastchester faculty, for example, who live in Pelham, and Pelham faculty who live in Eastchester. Four or five folks in this room have played in this, in this, uh, in this game, including uh, our elder statesman, uh, Mike Morgan, who was the star of the game in 1957, if I remember correctly. It was 56. <laughs> well, within a year, that's, that's terrific. But our uh, athletic director, Dom Ceseri, a graduate of, of Pelham, Many of the athletes on both teams have also played against one another and with one another in various baseball and basketball and uh, other uh, contests in, in town. Jerry, in terms of what the officials are looking for tonight, it's a rivalry, but effectively the coaches set the tone for players' conduct. And both Charlie Lightsey and John DiArco expect only the best in terms of sportsmanship from, uh, from their teams. And the, and the bottom line is, these officials going out on the field today don't expect anything different than they would in any other game. The referee this evening is Tony D'Addario. Uh, Tony will be in the offensive backfield. The field judge is uh, his son, Tony D'Addario. He'll have the clock. The umpire is Frank Mucci. He's in with the linebackers. And the head linesman is Anthony LaBella. As the Pelham squad is being introduced, Eastchester will most likely, as is their tradition, be introduced as one full team. And uh, we can tell you uh, that the weather is, uh, well, it has improved. It had been uh, raining and it's slightly misting now. And the temperature is about 45 degrees. Fortunately, Len, we're in the booth here and uh, we're staying warm. We have to uh, remind you that uh, that uh, star of the 1950, what game was that, uh, 56? 56, yes. The 1956 game is our producer and director, Mr. Mike Morgan. East Chester High School Football Television, Mr. Morgan. Okay, Len. Mike wants us to clarify that he was only a freshman in that game. Uh, so, anyway, this should be a very interesting game. The Eagles are used to playing in the rain two weeks ago. They faced Ardsley in a cold, rainy Saturday, and uh, Mike Morgan had an outstanding game that day for the East Chester Eagles, both offensively and defensively. So this weather is uh, nothing new to the Eagles. The field right now is fairly dry. It's absorbed the water well, and uh, while the mist is coming down steadily, it doesn't look like the field is getting too slippery just yet. Thank you, Len. This game is the first Colonial Cup Classic, and uh, let me explain uh, how that came about as the Pelham Marching Band is uh, coming through. During 1987, Mickey Spillett, former athletic director at Pelham, and Dom Ciceri, athletic director at Eastchester, along with the executive board of the Pelham Booster Club, discussed the possibility of establishing an annual trophy, which would be presented to the winner of the Pelham Eastchester football game. And the purpose of the cup is to salute the long-standing friendship and rivalry of the two schools, which Bob just mentioned. Tonight's winner will carry the trophy back to its school until next year, when, of course, the two teams will meet again and we will be here as well. Well, we're waiting for the start of the game, and we will be back with you shortly.
captains are in the center of the field now, talking with referee Tony D'Addario, getting ready for the coin flip. The captains for Pelham are right guard John Holton, tight end TJ Bopp, and fullback Anthony Senariccia. Pelham has won the toss and elected to receive. East just will be kicking from our light, right to our left. Uh, we've had gusting winds. Right now it appears that the wind is going from our right to our left, but at times it has been going from the left to the right in pregame, so it's kind of swirling winds. We don't know whether it really will have an effect or not on the game. For Pelham, number 85, T.J. Bopp, also back there with him are number 33, Joe Giacchino, and number 26, Anthony Tirasiano. Kicking off the East Chester Eagles will be Ralph Zingaro. Slight problem with the gusting wind, knocking the ball off the tee. And uh, one of the Eagles will actually hold the ball to help Ralph uh, kick it, I believe. Okay. Ralph has a high, deep kick going all the way back into the end zone for a touchback. Excellent kickoff by Ralph Zingaro. I think that may have been his best one of the year. So Pelham will be putting the ball into play, first down and 10 on their 20-yard line. They are quarterback by 10th grader Mike Bopp. Hand off to Anthony Rizzo, stopped at the line of scrimmage by and Ralph Zingaro and Chris McCory and Robert DeLeo. The East Chester defense at end, number 76, Ray Flood, Vinny Caparasso at tackle, McCrory, Chris McCrory at right tackle, and Ralph Zingaro at right end. Second and 10 for Pelham. Fullback Anthony Sinericia stopped at the line of scrimmage by Vin Cap Rossi, Rasso and Ralph Zingaro. Playing linebacker for the Eagles, Mickey Morgan, Robert DeLeo, and Chris Hayes. Back deep, safeties, Butch Burrows, Mark Williams, and Andy Petrillo. Third and ten. Anthony Rizzo trying the right side of the line. Picks up about two yard gain. Stopped by a whole host of Eagles. In there on the bottom, Chris Hayes, Ralph Zingaro, and Joe Chiffon. Bob Everett and I were a little bit concerned why Pelham elected to take the ball on uh, the opening kickoff. Now they're posed with the problem of kicking, punting into the stiff wind, and probably giving East Chester somewhat good field position, probably on their side of the 50-yard line. That was kind of a questionable call to open up with. I would have probably went on defense first and uh, had the wind at my back. Kicker is John Cathone. Back deep, Butch Burrows and Mickey Morgan. Short, low kick. Bounding out of bounds on the 45-yard line of Pelham. So the Eagles will put the ball in play. First and 10 on the Pelham 45. TV cable 35 
We have about 10 minutes left in the first quarter, and there's no score as the Eagles, with good field position, about to have their first offensive thrust. Pete, what do you look for? I think East Chester do the same thing they've done the past few weeks and just try to establish that tackle-to-tackle -tackle running game. Uh, they won't throw the ball that much. They may with the wind, but I, I wouldn't anticipate it, and I don't see them showing too much to Byron Hills early. Mark Williams over the right side for a little more than five yards. Stopped by John Holton and T.J. Bach. The Eagles line up with... Uh, Larry Esposito, a quarterback, Mark Williams, tailback, Ralph Zingaro, fullback, and Butch Burroughs is a running back. He will be alternating with Mickey Morgan also at running back. Anchoring the line is center Joe Luciano. We'll get to the rest of the offensive lineup in a moment. Second down and five for the Eagles. Alvar Lee split wide to the right. Morgan goes in motion. Hand off to Mark Williams over the left side for about six yards. Brought down by T.J. Bach. The rest of that offensive line for the East Chester Eagles, which has been doing a great job for their running backs. In fact, in all five games, at least one running back has gained over 100 yards thanks to this line. Has Chris McCorry at left guard, Chris Hayes at right guard, Joe Chiffon at right tackle, Alvar Lee at right end, Minnie Caparasso at left tackle, and Joe Labrino at left end. Ray Labrino, I'm sorry. Eagles first and 10, slot left, hand over to Mark Williams, going over the right side for approximately another five yards. Stopped by Anthony Senariccia. And James Roberts was also in on that tackle. Second down, a little more than five yards to go. The ball resting on the Pelham 30-yard line. Alvar lead wide, wide to the right. 85. Hand off to Ralph Zingaro on a fullback plunge over the right side. Picks up about two or three yards. Drop by James Roberts. Eagles will be facing their first critical play, third down and four. Critical play, man. <laughs> well, they've had success running the ball uh, straight up the middle. They've gained, except for that last play, five yards on every play. I don't see why they wouldn't run it again. Alvar Lee wide to the left. Esposito calling signals. Hand over to Mark Williams over the right side. And we have a flag down. It looks like he may have picked up the first down, but we'll have to wait and see on the penalty. 49, Bob, what does that flag usually indicate thrown over there? Nine times out of ten, uh, Jerry, that's uh, that's going to be a hold. It's surprising that in, in crucial third down situations this year in the games that we've had, we've had more holds. I don't know whether that's because offensive linemen feel a pressure, particularly if they're uh, running over their, uh, their over their hole position uh, to uh, take a little more advantage of the defensive ball player. So it's going to be a third and uh, we'll replay the down, so it'll be third and 14 here. And that was a hold on that, Bob? Okay, it's just facing a third down and 14. We'll be putting the ball in play from the Pelham 39-yard line. Butch Burroughs comes into the game for the Eagles. Wide to the left, Mickey Morgan. Wide to the right, Alvar Lee. Esposito straight back to pass. Looking for Lee, complete to the 20-yard line. He's still going. Ball is fumbled, and it is recovered by Pelham. Joe Giacchino on their eight-yard line. Big, big turnover there. We have no score with seven minutes remaining in the first half. Pelham will put the ball in play for the second time in this quarter. With a first and 10 on their eight yard line. The ball is fumbled on the play. And the East Chester Eagles have recovered. Number 60. 60. 
Versace on the recovery. Mike Versace for the Eagles. Big, big turnover. So we've had two fumbles on two plays, and uh, it looks like that rain, that mist is starting to affect the ball handling out there. Eagles put the ball in play, first and 10 on the Pelham 7, the first serious scoring threat for either team in this game. Eagles are in an unbalanced line to the right. Mark Williams running behind that unbalanced line down to the one yard line. Tackle in there by John Holton and Anthony Teresiano. Eagles have second down and one on the Pelham one yard line. So far, Williams has 22 yards and four carries, and they go to Williams once again, and he's stacked up right around the goal line. Tackled by Mike Montalto and Anthony Cenericia. Also, Anthony Teresiano in on the stop. Third down and goal to go for the Eagles, and we have an official's timeout. With the score, and if Mike can uh, focus on the new scoreboard, with five minutes and 30 seconds left, there's no score. You're watching Eastchester Government Access TV, Cable 35. This is the second time the scoreboard is being used, and tomorrow is the dedication. The dedication is going to be at the Mount Vernon New Rochelle game, and Bob Everett, who's going to be the head official for that? You are. Jerry, that's why we came down here tonight. So back to the game. Eastchester lining up unbalanced right. Going over the left side, Mickey Morgan for the touchdown. And the Eagles jump out in front with five minutes left in this first quarter by a score of six to nothing. I think the uh, East Chester offensive coaches threw uh, Pelham a little curve there. They've been very successful the past few weeks using the unbalanced line, which is just a tackle over situation. They had an unbalanced right. They came back with just a... It just looked like a straight ISO over the left guard, and it kind of crossed him up a little bit, and Mickey was able to get in the end zone. We have a penalty flag there. Butch Burrows is the holder for the East Chester Eagles, and Ralph Zingaro is their kicker. Illegal procedure against Pelham. The ball will be moved half the distance to the goal line. And it looks like the Eagles are sending in their quarterback, Larry Esposito. It appears that the Eagles will be going for the two-point conversion now that they only have a yard and a half to go. Eagles line up with an unbalanced line to the left. Pelham picks it up and shifts over, trying to stop it. Hand off to Mark Williams, and he is stopped short of the line initially, but his second effort gets in for the two points for East Chester, and they break out on top, eight to nothing. After getting that half the distance to the goal line call on the extra point, uh, that's always an ideal situation to cut you down from three yards to a yard and a half, and uh, those extra that extra point could always come in handy. Uh, getting up eight points is always a, an advantage for any team, not just because you're on the scoreboard first. It forces the other team, if they are to score, to go for the two points instead of simply kicking the ball because obviously they would still be one point behind. East Chester's done that three or four times this year, and it's been successful every time. Okay, on TV Cable 35, the Eagles out to an 8 nothing lead. And let's give credit on the fumble recovery to Frank Versace, number 60 for the Eagles. Back to Len Inzio. Ralph Zingaro will be kicking off once again for the Eagles. Back deep, T.J. Bopp for the Pelham Pelicans. Zingaro's kick. This one is high, but coming down short to Jack, Joe Giacchino. Taken around the 15-yard line and brings it up past the 26-yard line. Brought down by Frank Versace and 
Andy Petrillo. And also in on a tackle, Willie Spinelli. Pelham will put the ball in play just short of their 26 yard line, first and 10. This is the third series for Pelham. Their first series they had a punt and the second was stopped with that fumble. Mike Bopp, sophomore quarterback, lines up the Pelicans. Anthony Senarici are trying the middle of the Eagle line. Stopped by Ralph Zingaro and Chris McCrory for no gain. Second down and 10 for Pelham on their 26 yard line. With a little quick uh, break in the action, we want to remind you that next week we will be back at the Jarvis Bowl in Eastchester, New York for the big game, Byram Hills, rated number one in the county against the Eagles. Pelham went to a slot left and a quick count, and Anthony Rizzo carried on the play for what appears to be a two-yard loss. Stopped by Chris McCrory and Ray Flood. Brings up a third down and 12 for Pelham, back on their 23-yard line. Joe Giacchino, halfback, back to pass, throws the ball deep, picked off by Mickey, Mo no, I'm sorry, picked off by Mike Marone of the Eagles and returned back into Pelham territory on the 47. Mike seems to be a bad weather player. He had a huge kickoff return against Ardsley, which helped to uh, win that game, and now he comes up with a big interception here in the rain. Pete? With Pelham in that third and long situation, uh, Mike uh, Marone's job was just to play center field and just uh, watch the quarterback. The East just secondary played it perfectly, not biting on that little option and uh, just playing the pass really well. Okay. Alvar Lee wide to the left, Mickey Morgan wide to the right, Esposito straight back to pass, looking over the middle, throwing deep for Lee, just incomplete. I'm sorry, Butch Burrows. Covering for Pelham was Anthony Teresiano. So the Eagles will put the play, ball in play, second down and 10 on the Pelham 47 yard line. Off to Mickey Morgan, spins out of the tackle and breaks loose. He's going all the way. He's going to do it. Morgan all the way, 47 yards for the touchdown. And the Eagles jump out on top, 14 to nothing, with about a minute and 45 seconds left here in the first quarter. Pete? That, that's becoming something that East Chester's being noted for now, that second effort. Mickey Morgan, Pelham just not wrapping up on defense. Mickey just, you know, taking on, he could take on one tackler all day. He breaks that tackle, goes down the sideline, beats the secondary people to the end zone. Obviously, he's quite a bit faster than his father. And, uh, and East Chester's up 14-0. And another point, East Chester's taken advantage of having that win to their back, and they have been inside the 50 on both possessions so far, and Pelham has not been past the 30-yard line. Ralph Zincaro's kick is good, making the score East Chester 15, Pelham 0. Mickey Morgan had a tremendous game, gaining over 100 yards rushing against Ardsley two weeks ago in the same kind of weather, a cold, rainy day. And that's exactly what we have here, only it's nighttime. You're watching Cable TV 35, East Chester Government Access TV. I'm Jerry Fishoff here with Len Inzio, Bob Everett, Pete Archiello, Paul Votano, our expert spotter, Vin Caparasso, who uh, helped us by moving the, ba the Pelham band over a little so we can hear ourselves, and your producer, director, cameraman, Mike Morgan. Ralph Zincaro kicking off to the Pelham six yard line. Ball taken by Anthony Teresiano. And he returns at 25 yard, 20 yards to the 25 yard line for Pelham. No, I mean, 
in on a tackle for Eastchester. Alvar Lee and Chris Bell. Bellon comes to the line of scrimmage for the fourth time in this first quarter. Hand off to Anthony Senericia. Pick up, a, pick up of about one yard. Stopped by Joe Safone and Chris Hayes. Also in there was Mickey Morgan. Once again, the uh, East Chester defensive line doing a great job. Vinny Caparasso and Joey Chavone and the boys not letting Pelham even get past the line of scrimmage. And plus, getting back to what we said again, we hate to repeat it one more time, but Pelham taking the ball on the opening kickoff and going head into the wind, put East Chester on top 15-0 early, and they just they cannot throw the ball, and Bob has something to say. Are you going to call a timeout, Peter, with hopes of stopping uh, Pelham and let him punt into the wind? For the uh, before the end of the quarter, I wouldn't be surprised if John Diarco did do that. It it would be real nice for East Chester to get on top early in the second quarter, maybe 21 nothing, and then they can play their own game, dictate what they want to show to Byron Hills for next week. Okay, Pelham after that uh, illegal procedure play puts the ball in play, second down and 14. Back to pass for his first pass. Mike Bop throwing deep, intended for T.J. Bop, his brother. And the referees indicated it is a catch along the sidelines. Side Butch Burrows on the coverage, and that is good enough for a first down. The first, first down for the Pelham Pelicans. Brings the ball out to their 38-yard line for a first and 10. Excellent catch on the play there by T.J. Bopp, bringing the ball in with one hand right along the sidelines. Joe Jackson on a reverse, picks up about three yards. Brought down by Butch Burrows in the open field. That's the end of the first quarter with East Chester leading Pelham by a score of 15 to nothing. Thank you very much, Len. We want to remind you folks that we'd like to hear from you in terms of what kind of sports action you'd like to see from East Chester High School and to uh, send your comments and suggestions to uh, Cable TV 35, care of East Chester Town Hall, 40 Mill Road, East Chester, New York, 10709, or uh, give a call, 793-5800, and talk to uh, Mary O'Donnell and tell us uh, what you prefer. Uh, we're doing the best we can, and we're open to suggestions. And also, tell us how you like uh, our football and soccer coverage so far. Len Inzio, and of course, we like the score, and we want to remind you not to jinx the Eagles, but Game of the Week is undefeated this year. Okay, we'll be starting the second quarter momentarily. Pelham will be putting the ball in play, second down, and about seven yards from their 41-yard line. Slot right, and it looks like we have an illegal procedure against Pelham. Looks like the left end jumped on that play. Pelham will be pushed back five yards and will face second down and about 12 yards to go. Looking down in 13 from their 35 yard line. Joe Giacchino in motion. Mike Bopp back to pass, and he hits Joe Giacchino over the middle around the 50-yard line. What down by Butch Burrows and Mike Marone, and that'll be good enough for a Pelham first down. Pelham has come up with two first downs passing, Pete. Yeah, well, now they have the wind at their back, and uh, it looks like they're trying to utilize the the under zone there, right in front of Mike Marone, something in the middle, and it, it's been effective so far. First down and 10 from the Eagle 49-yard line. Counterplay to Joe Jack. Kino 
breaks loose for a gain of about 13 yards. Brought down by Ralph Singaro and Butch Burrows. The Pelham Pelicans have a drive going. That's their third first down in this series. They have a first down and 10 on the East Chester 37 yard line. Mike Bopp back to pass once again. Penalty flags on a play. Ball intended for Anthony Rizzo. Drop on the coverage. Mike Morgan. But we do have a flag on the play. And the preliminary indication is holding against Pelham. Next week, we hope you'll be with us for the East Chester High School homecoming game against Byram Hills. Byram Hills rated highly in the state. East Chester right now honorable mention in the state, but both teams are tied atop of League 3A with perfect 4-0 records and 5-0 overall. We will have extended coverage for you and bringing you some tidbits from the Class of 58 reunion as well as girls volleyball. Pelham will put the ball in play. First down and 20 yards after that holding play from their 47-yard line. Mike back, bop, straight back to pass. Screen pass to Joe Giacchino. And Joe works his way all the way down to the East Chester 33. A pickup of about 15 yards. In on the tackle, Rob DeLeo. And Vinny Caparasso. That shows a lot of hustle. Vinny's a down lineman going back downfield 15 yards to make a tackle. Pete. Yeah, the East Chester defensive line is an agile bunch. The thing that concerns me a little bit with East Chester's defense, Pelham on misdirection plays have been have been hurting East Chester tonight. That cut trap hurt them before, and that little half roll right and throw back left hurt them just then. Bop back. <laughs> Pass intended for Dan Green. And picked off by Andrew Petrillo, the second East Chester interception. That's three turnovers that East Chester has come up with. A fumble recovery and now two pass interceptions. I think uh, Pella may have gone to the well one too many times there in on the under, the below coverage, they call it, uh, in front of the secondary people. It tipped off the receiver's hands. He was in an awkward position, and uh, Andy Petrillo made a nice play on it. Well, the Eagles stopped that drive and will be putting the ball in play on their 18-yard line, first and 10. This is actually the first time the Eagles have really started deep in their own territory. Leading 15 to nothing here with about nine minutes left to go in this first half. Esposito pitches back to Mark Williams going around left end. Mark turns it up and picks up a gain of about two yards. In on a tackle, Joe Giacchino and Anthony... Centericia for the Pelham Pelicans. Second down and eight for the Eagles. Jerry Fishoff just reminded me to tell you the score and the time, and I told him I just announced it a few seconds ago. But it's East Chester 15, Pelham zero, and we have about eight and a half minutes to go in this first half. Second down and eight for the Eagles. Esposito under the center. And off to Williams. Drop behind the line of scrimmage by number 49, James Roberts. And the East Chest Eagles call timeout as they face a third down and 10 situation. John, the, uh, the Eagles have fallen into exactly what John DiArco hoped they wouldn't. They got a quick lead, up 15 points after the first quarter, and they've kind of sat back a little bit on their haunches. That offensive line is not getting off as they did in the first quarter when they sustained those two drives, and now their Pelham is starting to dictate a little bit. Like we said earlier, any team that is emotional, as Pelham is, can do any, can upset any team on any day and I know John DiArco doesn't want Pelham to get that upper hand psychologically even though they are down 15 points uh, in this situation here third and ten 
With the wind in his face, I'm not sure if John would elect to throw. He may throw. Once again, we have to get back to that situation. He does not want to show Byram Hills too much. Uh, they haven't. They've been successful throwing earlier this year. They've thrown five or six times per game, but. They may just select to just run the ball, get it up there a little bit. If they can get the first, they can. If not, they have an excellent kicking game. Butch Burrows punting the ball. And uh, I think the Eagles just want to basically get out of that malaise that they're in psychologically and just try to dictate the, the action again and get that momentum back. Okay, the Eagles will put the ball in play. Third down and 10 from their 18-yard line. Going wide to the right, Butch Burrows. Esposito straight back to pass, looking downfield, deep for Burrows. And just off his fingertips, a little too far on the coverage, Anthony Teresiano. That'll bring up fourth down and 10 for the Eagles. Okay, there was a penalty flag on the play. It looks like it's a holding against the East Chester Eagles. They're talking to the uh, Pelham players. And while we're waiting for the decision on the penalty, Jerry, do you have anything to say? Well, you guys don't let me talk about football. We've got all the experts here. So I'll talk about Rose Fever. And the uh, roses, a uh, dozen roses that uh, for $10 you can support the East Chester Eagles Sports Club with the proceeds going to the scholarship fund. See a club representative or call 961-4717, or even stop by in the school, say hello to Patty Handel. She'll make sure to uh, get you your dozen roses. Of course, they're tax deductible. And Lenny, you're going to tell us how uh, good a bargain the roses are. Well, we've been searching throughout Westchester, and the cheapest set of roses we could find were $18. So for $10, you're $8 ahead of the game. The Eagles are faced with a third and 20, as Pelham accepted that holding penalty, trying to push the Eagles further back into their own territory. And we have a flag. Delay of game against the Eagles, which will bring up a third down and 25 and move the ball just inside their five yard line. So the Eagles deep in a hole right now with about eight minutes left to go in our half, leading by a score of 15 to nothing over Pelham. Talking about the sports club once again, on November 1st, in the high school cafeteria, they're sponsoring a uh, special program on scholarships and athletics. We'll be back to that shortly. Eagles put the ball in play. Esposito back to pass, looking long, deep downfield, throwing for Morgan, and the ball is picked off by number 24 of Pelham, Dan Green. Dan normally plays offensive end. Mike Morgan makes the tackle on the play. And Pelham will put the ball in play on the East Chester Eagle 36 yard line. Bob Everett had a, a good point there. That was equivalent to about a 30 yard punt by East Chester into the win with no return. It, it turns out uh, it equals itself out. Also, no risk of having the ball uh, blocked on the punt. Mike Bopp back to throw, throwing for number 80, John Cathone. Ball is complete, tackled by Andrew Petrillo on the Eagle 22-yard line, first and 10 for Pelham. And for Pelham at the East Chester 21-yard line. Mike Bopp pitches it back to Anthony Rizzo, going around left end, picks up about three yards. Brought down by Anthony Petrillo and Ralph Zingaro after a gain of four yards. That'll be second down and six on the East Chester 18-yard line. Well, what we've seen is Pelham started the game out with nothing but a running attack and went nowhere, and since they've started throwing the ball, they're moving. Second down and six for Pelham. Joe Giacchino in motion. Hand off to Anthony Rizzo, breaking back up the middle, stopped by Joe Marone. And Butch Burrows at the East Chester five yard line. Mike Marone on the tackle. Pelham will have a first and goal to go from the Pelham one, five yard line.
Unbalanced line left for Pelham. Hand off to Anthony Centericia. Picks up about two yards. Stopped by Ray Labrino and Andy Petrillo. Second down and three yards to go for the touchdown for Pelham. On balance line right this time for Pelham. Hand off to Anthony Centerici, a stop back at the five yard line by Joe Chiffon and Vinny Caparasso. And Chris McCory also in on that tackle, bringing up a third down and goal to go from the five yard line. That play there, uh, Looks to be like their Pelham's trying to set up a little what they what East Chester calls a 32 pass, where a tight end and one of the running backs off the play action just do a little down and out into the, each corner of the end zone. Unbalanced line to the left, Mike Bopp back to pass and balls deflected at the line of scrimmage by knocked down by Joe Luciano who usually plays offensive center for the Eagles and now is in helping out the defense with this goal line stand. That brings up a fourth down and goal to go from the five yard line for Pelham. And we have a timeout. Pop has to come out for one play. Whenever play is stopped for an injured player in scholastic sports, the rule requires they sit out. And in football, that's for one play. Going in at quarterback now, number 12, Chris, Chris Ritchie. We have a fourth down and goal to go for the Pelham Pelicans on the East Chester five yard line and it's really starting to rain very hard now. Uh, score East Chester 15, Pelham zero with about four and a half minutes to go in this half. Timing play and it is complete to TJ Bob. So Chris Rickey comes in for one play and throws the touchdown. That makes the score, Pelham six, East Chester 15. Pelham appears as if they may be lining up to try and kick the extra point, and now they're changing their uh, decision. The kicking tee has been thrown off the field, and Pelham apparently has some confusion as decided to call timeout. Okay, we wanna remind you to please support the East Chester Volunteer Ambulance Corps Building Fund Campaign. Donations should be made to EVAC PO Box 482, Scarsdale 10583. If you would like to join EVAC, contact them at their non-emergency number 725-0900 or stop in. All donations are welcome and it goes to a great cause and uh, you've seen them around for all of our other football telecasts. Today's game is being produced and directed by Mr. Mike Morgan, who's uh, snugly have, uh, has all of us in the booth, away from the elements, and it's uh, really coming down, as uh, Len mentioned. The Eagles lead 15 to six, as we have about four minutes and 25 seconds left in the first half. You're watching Eastchester Government Access TV Cable 35. Pelham is asked to have the ball lined up on the left hash mark, and they will be going for the two-point conversion, trailing by a score of 15 to six. Mike Bopp back in at quarterback. Hand off to number 33, Joe Giacchino, looking to pass, and the ball is incomplete, intended for T.J. Bopp. Back on the coverage, Butch Burrows for the Eagles. You know, that touchdown was an incredible play. Here you have a junior quarterback, Chris Ritchie sitting on the bench in a cold, rainy night, coming in and on the very first play, hitting the receiver on a timing pattern for the touchdown. This kickoff will be Mickey Morgan and Butch Burrows lining up to kick off the ball. Uh, the hero of the game so far for Pelham, uh, substitute junior quarterback, 
Chris Rickey. And once again, we're having a little trouble with the ball rolling off the tee in this rain and uh, swirling wind. And there's the kick. High, but not very deep. Morgan coming up, picks it up on the 25-yard line, up to the 30. Heading across field. And Morgan is still going. Finally brought down around the 44-yard line of Pelham by number 89, Tim Reynolds. And that would be a 32-yard kickoff return for Morgan. Len, we ought to mention and congratulate Pete Archiello, who will be joining Cable 3, UA Columbia, along with John Caridio and Coach Ray Karowski in their uh, football game of the week. And we understand that uh, Cable 3 will be covering the bowl games from right here in Mount Vernon Memorial Field. Yes, that's been a tradition for Cable 3. They cover all nine bowl games, and uh, they do a real good job with it. I'm really happy to be joining them. Congratulations, Pete. Back to Len Enzio. East Chester puts the ball in play, first and 10, handoff to Mark Williams going over the left side, picks up about four yards. Stopped by T.J. Bopp and Dan Green on the play. And we now have timeout for the four minute warning with the score East Chester 15, Pelham six. Bob Everett, how do you like the game so far? Jerry, it's fun to uh, watch a game from up here in the uh, booth rather than down on the field. Maybe wondering what uh, Tony Diderio is doing. He's going to both coaches on, on each side of the field, indicating to them uh, formally if there's four minutes left or 3.58 or left in, the, in half, and how many times each of them uh, uh, have remaining in, in the half. The other thing that uh, officials do in this four-minute warning is at times communicate things they're seeing out in the field with the coaches on each side. Okay, the Eagles will put the ball back in play with second down and six from the Pelham 43-yard line. And off to walk Mark Williams trying to go over the right side. Picks up about three or four yards. Stopped by Anthony Senariccia and Mike Montaldo. Ball is spotted inside the Pelham 40 yard line at the 39 yard line and East Chester will face a third down and three. Andrew Petrillo checking into the East Chester lineup. Alvar Lee splits wide to the right and Butch Burrows wide to the left. Esposito hands off to Mark Williams who is stopped by T.J. Bopp along with Mike Montaldo, short of the first down, brings up fourth down and two yards for the Eagles. And that wind that when we started the game was going from our right to our left appears to be uh, going back and forth. It's now actually going slightly from our left to our right, as is the rain. Mickey Morgan checks into the East Chester lineup. Fourth down and two for East Chester from the Pelham 37 yard line. And we have a delay of game as East Chester was confused on getting that play off. And that will bring up a fourth down and seven. We have a little over two minutes remaining in this first half with East Chester leading by a score of 15 to six. Remember, you're watching this game on Cable 35, East Chester Government Access Cable TV. Eagles come to the line of scrimmage, facing a fourth down and seven on the Pelham 43-yard line. Alvar Lee in motion. Esposito back to pass. Throw is too high over Andrew Petrillo's head and incomplete. 
on the coverage for Pelham. Number 23, Bradley Phillips. So Pelham will take over first and 10 on downs at their 43 yard line. Okay. First and 10, Pelham from their 43 yard line with about two minutes left to go in this first half. In motion, Joe Giacchino. TJ Bopp hands off to Anthony Cenericier into the middle of the East Chester line. Picks up about two yards before he's stopped by Ralph Zincaro. Uh, Chris McCrory and Mike Morgan. Pete? Bob Everett brings up a good point. It seems that the East Chester secondary is close to 15 yards off the ball at the snap of the ball. I would assume that's just to prevent a big play towards the end of the half, get in the, get in the locker room at halftime up 15-6 and just get things back together. Second down and eight for Pelham. Carrying the ball, Anthony Teresiano for the first time tonight. Picks up about a yard. 85, Stopped by Ralph Zingaro, Frank Versace, and Chris Hayes. Where they go in one direction and they try to get the flow with the linebackers going one side and they come back with what John DeArco calls a little cut trap. East Chester stuffed it up well there. They've had a problem. That's been an Achilles heel for them uh, earlier this season. Third down and eight for Pelham. Putting the ball in play from their 40 yard line. Mike Bopp 85. throws a pass, hits TJ Bopp, his brother, who carries the ball into East Chester territory down to the 43 yard line for a first and 10. Chris Hayes in on the tackle, joined by Ray Labrino. According to our unofficial scoreboard, there's about 30 seconds left here in the first half. With East Chester leading by a score of 15 to 6. First and 10 Pelham from the East Chester 43 yard line. Mike Bopp looking to pass. A timing pattern and the receiver, number 24, Dan Green really wasn't ready for the ball. Well, Andy Petrillo for East Chester almost comes up with the interception. And that will be halftime. Time has run out with the score. The East Chester Eagles 15 and the Pelham Pelicans 6. You're watching Eastchester Government Access TV Cable 35, Pelham uh, celebrating their homecoming, and Eastchester, of course, out to ruin it, as Eastchester did at Westlake. The score is 15-6, and we're at halftime here at very wet Mount Vernon Memorial Field. We want to remind you that this game will be uh, repeated during the course of the coming week. The Eagles if they should hold on to the lead, and it's one touchdown plus, very important factor, can go to the top of League 3A as Byram Hills has a non-league contest tomorrow against Hackley. And Hackley is led by some friend, old friends of ours, Andy Height and uh, Mike Salambini and Danny, Val and Danny Valentine. Next week, 
looking past this game, which we hope the uh, East Chester Eagle football players are not doing, but we are, we will bring you homecoming at East Chester from the Jarvis Bowl, we will host Byram Hills. In addition, this will be an extended broadcast, and we will show segments of the class of 1958, 30th reunion, and we will attempt to also bring you some segments of the girls' basketball game. We noticed our good friend, we noticed our good friend John Caridio gave us a visit in the booth, and uh, because we trained Pete Archiello so well, uh, producer Morgan, uh, we're going to lose him to Cable 3, but uh, as we said before, we wish him the best of luck and congratulations. We will uh, be back shortly for the start of the second half, and for the uh, third quarter, we will bring you the mellow voice of Paul Votano to call the play-by-play -play and give Len Inzio a rest. We also would like you fans to tell us how you like these broadcasts, how we can improve by writing or calling East Chester Town Hall, care of cable 35, 7935 800, the town hall number, and ask for the supervisor's office, Mary O'Donnell, there, or write East Chester Town Hall, 40 Mill Road, East Chester, New York. You to please support the East Chester Volunteer Ambulance Corps Building Fund. Donations can be made to EVAC. P.O. Box 482, Scarsdale, New York, 10583. And they're looking for people to join EVAC. And please call them at their emergency number, 725-0900, or stop by. In East Chester and Tuckahoe are invited to take over the town government. Contact Town Hall, that same number, 7935800. Ask for the Youth Council. And students participating in Youth and Government Day, November 17th, will be excused from school. And we got Len Inzio smiling about that one again. Lenny reminded us last week that they never used to do that when he went to school. But of course, many years ago, when times have changed. One thing that doesn't change is the tradition of a rose fever. The sports club is selling roses at $10 a dozen, which may be picked up at the start, or actually all day, at East Chester's Jarvis Bowl in celebration of homecoming. The proceeds go to the scholarship fund. Please call 961-4717. See a club representative. See Tony Del Vecchio, the president and a great <laughs> fan of East Chester Eagles football. And he must be somewhere tonight in the rain. We're sure he's here or stop in at the school athletic office and see Patty Handel. We see that the Pelicans have taken the field and the Eagles are now coming out. The Eagles started the game wearing a white with red trim and now it's a muddy tan with uh, red numbers and red trim. The Eagles, as we told you, have a nine point lead and that is very significant because it is one touchdown plus we'll be back for the start of the second half very shortly eagles warming up and coach john diarco we would like to thank the east chester blue devils for their help with the video equipment tonight and speaking of the blue devils the voice of the east chester blue devils bringing you the third quarter of action paul votano it's good to have you back with us paul paul uh, as we mentioned inaugurated the season and our game of the week thank you jerry the score of the game is 15 to 6 in favor of the eagles uh, they fairly dominated play for the first quarter and then uh, Pelham got back into the swing of things and scored on a very nice drive. And the Eagles were driving themselves when uh, time expired in the second quarter. And uh, we're just about getting ready for the third quarter kickoff in a few moments. The field is in fairly good shape. Uh, Memorial Field here has a very good crown to it. it uh, has some soft spots as the rain continues to pelt down here, but uh, I don't think it should be uh, too much trouble for either club 
the footing should be pretty good. Uh, where they spot the ball is going to be the key here. Uh, they probably will spot it as they continue to do on the hash marks. If they do in the middle of the field, then uh, you've got some problems. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Half, uh, Mark Williams carried the ball 10 times, picked up 33 yards. Uh, Mickey Morgan carried the ball only twice, but uh, one of those was for a 46 yard touchdown around the left side, so he had a total of 47 yards. And the key to one of the uh, short scoring drives for the Eagles was a fumble recovery by Frank Versace. Two, intercept two interceptions in the uh, first half. You had Mike Marone on one and Andy Petrillo on the other. And those key turnovers were what led to, uh, at least one of them led to an Eagle scoring drive. The Eagles' first touchdown came at 5.09 of the first quarter. Uh, Mickey Morgan on a uh, on a plunge for the score and he scored the second touchdown as well that one as we mentioned at 146 of the second quarter 46 yard uh, run around the left side. Kicking off for Pelham will be number 12 Chris Ritchie going deep for the Eagles is Butch Burrow and Mickey Morgan. Again, the score, Eastchester 15, Pelham 6. And who uh, came in for one play uh, when uh, the starting quarterback, Bop, was injured and uh, tossed a touchdown pass. And he's now kicking off for the Pelicans. Richie boots it and Morgan has it on about the 13 yard line following his blockers almost got loose but it was brought down at the 34 yard line by number 64 John Holton of the Pelicans the Eagles will put it in play first and 10 as I say they spot it at the 34 yard line of the Eagles. Lawrence Esposito, number seven, is the quarterback. Split to the left is uh, Butch Burrow. Mickey Morgan, alongside. Esposito is back to pass, does, and is dragged out of bounds at about the 40-yard line by John Cathone of the Pelicans. Picked up about five yards on the carry. Second and five at the 40 yard line of the Eagles. Wide to the right is Burrow. Pitches back to Ralph Zingaro. Gets very close to the first down at the 45 yard line. Brought down by Anthony Teresiano and Vin Mangiafreda. Beautiful names. Short yardage situation. I guess they're going to call timeout for a measurement. From our angle, it looks like he's made it. Ball is now rolling away. It is really pelting down. The wind is doing. Uh, score remains 15 to 6. We've got 10.57 to go when play resumes. 
And it is a first down for the Eagles on their own 45 yard line. Time is running. Just the start of things in the third quarter. Esposito pitches back to Zingaro. He is getting loose and he may go all the way down to the 20 yard line where John Cathone brings him down, saved the touchdown. Also, Joe Giacchino in on the hit. Long gainer on the play of, uh, let's see, 35 yards on the carry for Ralph Zingaro. That's an interesting call by Eastchester on uh, third down and just a couple inches. Uh, kind of a, although the Mount Vernon Memorial Field holds the water well, it's a little bit slippery on the outside. I'm a little bit surprised they try to take it to the outside in that play. Pitches to number 22 of the uh, Eagles, Mark Williams going up the middle for a couple of yards. Brought down by Anthony Cernecchia. Also number 85. TJ Bob. TJ Bob, Mike's brother. Second and about eight to go. The ball inside the 20 at about the 18. Esposito leads them out. Zingaro is split to the right. Morgan in motion. 33. Pitch is back to Burrow, drops it, picks it up, and gets down close to the first down to about the 13 yard line before he's brought down. Tackle made by Anthony Cernecchia, along with uh, Dan Green of the Pelicans. He's about a yard short. So it'll be third and one. They spotted at the 11. Out they come. Going wide, number 32, Lee for the Eagles. The handoff goes to Burrow. He has the first down and more as he gets to about the eight. Anthony Cernecchia made the tackle, but it's a first and goal to go for the Eagles at the eight. Split to the right again is Lee. Esposito barks out the signals. Gives it to Williams. He's down to the five, inside the five to about the four. Tackle made by T.J. Bopp, assisted by Chris Ritchie. They spotted at the four. It'll be second and goal for the Eagles. Pelicans digging in now for their stand once again the Eagles uh, ground game getting the job done well over 100 yards spreading it spreading the wealth Mark Williams doing the brunt of the work 13 carries 47 yards Mickey Morgan with that 146 yard run two carries he has 47 yards second and goal at the four the pitches to Burrow he's trying to cut around the corner on the right side he is in for the touchdown makes the score now Eagles 21 and Pelicans six. That was good for four yards around the right side. Just cut it inside beautifully. Once again, the East Chester Eagles, which seems to be their pattern this year, started out strong scoring on their first two drives of the game and once again recharged their batteries at halftime and put together a scoring drive. Zingaro will attempt the conversion from placement. Burrow will be holding. The snap, it bounces around a little bit. Burrow has it. And he's being chased around by three Pelicans. He's loose. And he's trying to get into the end zone. And he is in. Beautiful play. 
He went all the way back to the 20, got around the left side, and scored for two points, making it now Eastchester 23, Pelham 6. Once again, that Eastchester team speed does it again for them. Butch Burroughs, just uh, an individual effort for the two-point conversion. The thing about Eastchester that makes them such an effective offensive running team is that they're downfield blocking. Mickey Morgan, when he's in that slot back, uh, Chris Hayes gets downfield. The offensive line, once they get past that initial line of scrimmage, get downfield. That That is the mark of an excellent, excellent offensive rushing team, getting those downfield blocks and creating things downfield and not just uh, laying the all the burden on one person's shoulder. You're watching East Chester Government Access TV Cable 35 where the Eagles now have a 23-6 lead with a little over seven minutes left in the third quarter. We want to remind you as the teams get ready for the uh, kickoff, a special event in the East Chester High School Cafeteria sponsored by the Sports Club on 7.30 on November 1st. Larry Gerasiotti of Georgetown University will speak on the college application process, college athletics recruitment and scholarship. November 1st, 7.30 at the High School Cafeteria sponsored by the Sports Club. Here's Paul Votano. Ralph Zingaro kicking off for the Eagles. Deep is T.J. Bopp for the Pelicans. The boot is taken, oh, it's fumbled all the way up and the Eagles have it all the way down to about the 21 yard line. The ball was recovered by number 84, who is Chris Bell. Chris Bell, who's on the special teams and that's something he won't forget. On any, on any kick, Paul, uh, where the uh, receiver does not gain possession, in this case, the Pelham uh, re uh, receiver muffed the ball. Eastchester can recover a muff, cannot advance. That's why the ball is uh, back at the 25-yard line. Thank you, Bob Everett, for that uh, analysis. It is on the 25, where the Eagles will put it in play. First and 10 to go. Seven minutes. S about seven minutes and running. Eagles lead it 23 to six. We're in the third quarter. Marone is split to the left. The handoff is to Burrow. He stacked up after a yard gain. Tackle made by Alvin Kennan along with John Cathone and TJ Bopp of the Pelicans. Gain of one, second and nine. The ball at the 24-yard line of Pelham. As the rain continues to pelt down. Footing is still good, but the uh, ball handling is uh, its getting a little bit uh, sloppy out there. Wide to the right is Marone. The pitch is back to Mark Williams. He's getting loose around the left side, gets to about the 16 before he's brought down by Joe Giacchino. That'll make it third and a long two. They spotted at the 17 yard line of the Pelham Pelicans. As we indicated, Earlier, this is the first annual Colonial Cup, which will be awarded to the winning team. And it's also homecoming, I believe, for Pelham. Five minutes and 20 seconds in running. Esposito calls out the signals. Give is to Zingaro. He's down to about the 10 or 11 yard line. Tackle was made by Anthony Cernecchia. It is a first down for the Eagles. Also in on that stop was Bradley Phillips. It's at the 11, so they can uh, get a first down without necessarily going in. First and 10, Eagles. They're on the march once again. 23 to 6, they lead it. Four minutes, 48 seconds to go in the third quarter. Williams has it, gets loose over the right side, tripped up by Mike Montalto of the Pelicans. Pickup of two, second and eight. It's at the nine. The nine, 
offensive line definitely is doing a great job there opening holes for these very speedy Eastchester backs. Unbalanced right for the Eagles. And on the keeper Esposito has it. Gets to about the seven yard line brought down by Rick Plummer of the Pelicans. It'll be third down and about six to go at the seven yard line. Officials time out. Now time is back in 343 left in the third quarter. Eagles leading it 23 to 6 and driving once again. Time is out. Officials time out. Time is now back in. Eagles trying to salt it away here. It's an unbalanced left now. The give is to Mark Williams, gets inside the five to about the four. Anthony Cerneccia made the stop. He's been, on, been in, in on a lot of tackles, has young Mr. Cerneccia. Timeout for Eastchester with the score. Eastchester 23, Pelham 6, 254 left in the third quarter. And you're watching East Chester Cable TV, Channel 35. You're listening to the voice of Paul Votano doing the play-by-play, -play and uh, he's uh, sharing that uh, honor, as it's always an honor for us to bring you the Eagles and their endeavors, along with Len Inzio, Pete Arciello on the commentary, our guest commentator, talking about uh, referees and rules, Bob Everett. I'm Jerry Fishoff, and I'm here in the booth with producer-director Mike Morgan, in the rain, who's uh, showing us the rain. He's also doing the uh, camera work. And of course, Vince Caparasso calling out the numbers for us using those big set of binoculars. Did I uh, leave out anybody? I didn't. It's a, it's a big crowd and we're, we're really having a ball. We notice it's, uh, it's about 55 degrees in the booth and it's down to about 44 on the field as well as being muddy. Back to the action, Paul Votano, two minutes, 45 seconds left. The Eagles on the move, already leading 23-6. Looking for an invitation to come back to Memorial Field for the bowl game, and we think they're going to do it, don't we, Paul? We certainly do. It's at the five-yard line, on balance right for the Eagles. Esposito gives it off to Morgan as a flag goes down. Morgan gets to about the three before he's brought down by T.J. Bopp of the Pelicans. Also in on the stop was Anthony Rizzo of Pelham. But there is a flag down, and the preliminary indication is that it is against the Eagles. So that'll set them back, but uh, we'll give them another shot at it if the penalty is accepted. Two minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The, the penalty was declined. The Pelicans will take over. They hold, and they'll put it in play first and ten on their own six-yard line. Ninety-four yards away for from a score, but that's what they have to do to get back in this ball game. Quarterback remains the sophomore Mike Bopp, number ten. The give is to Cerneccia. He gets maybe back to the line of scrimmage before he's brought down. Tackle made by Ralph Zingaro along with Chris McCordy. Cordy. Mickey Morgan also in on the hit. No gain on the play. Second and ten. 142 in running in the third quarter. Bop hands off to number 22, Anthony Rizzo. No hole there. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain. I'd like to ask uh, Bob Everett a question here. We notice uh, that uh, the ball is being switched on every play. Uh, is that an option? Tell us how that works. Jerry, as referees, you're really trying to set the stage, so uh, weather is no factor. Uh, 
two of the officials out there have towels to wipe the ball off. But the real, the real important person that nobody pays attention to on a game like this is the ball boy. That number 32 running in and out on every play, he's the crucial difference in a game played under these type of conditions. Ball boys get no credit, period. They deserve all the credit. Uh, we, we knew that uh, Bob would give credit to somebody that we had forgotten. We noticed Mr. Z is at the field. Of course, he's East Chester's designated man on the sidelines with the chains. We want to say hello to him. One minute, under a minute left to play in the third quarter. Bob is back to pass, and it's intercepted by Mickey Morgan of the Eagles. And they'll take over at the 12-yard line. Joe Giacchino made the hit for Pelham. But it's going to be a first down with about uh, 40 seconds to go. The clock is running, however. I don't know if they'll get the playoff before the quarter ends. 34. That's his third interception for the Eagles. Sorry. Uh, Marone made one of the other interceptions Andy Petrillo and now uh, Mickey Morgan okay time is running and time has run out in the third quarter with the score remaining Eastchester Eagles 23 Pelham Pelicans 6. All right, East Chester leading 23 to 6 as we start the fourth quarter. That last play, because of a uh, problem with our microphone, uh, you may not have had any voice. That was Mark Williams going around the right side for a pickup of about five yards. Okay, that brings Mark Williams' total yardage to 64 yards. Mark started out the season like a house on fire, getting over 100 yards in the first three Eagle games. But he's been held quiet since then. Back to throw, Larry Esposito. Pass intended for number 20, Ray Labrino. And back there covering for Pelham, Bradley Phillips. That'll bring, down, bring up a third down and five from the six yard line. Esposito has completed one out of four passes, and that was a 25-yarder to Butch Burroughs early in the first quarter. Butch Burroughs splitting out wide to the left. Mike Morgan over to the right. Esposito straight back to pass, looking for Burroughs. Throw it in the end zone, and... Held on to spectacular circus catch by Butch Burrows, and Eastchester moves out on top by a score of 29 to six with about 11 and a half minutes to go in this game. Spectacular catch by Butch. They say that rain is the great equalizer, but uh, when you get an athletic performance like that, uh, there's not much that can stop it. He had a defender on his back, and Butch Burroughs just stood with the ball. He was in the end zone. He just held on. It was a great play. And that's Burroughs' third touchdown of the day. Leaping ability. Leaping ability. The Eagles line up for a two-point conversion. Esposito back to pass, rolling out to his right, looking. Throwing, and the ball is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Le Ray Labrino. Back covering for Pelham on that play was number 24, Dan Green. We'd like to thank Paul Votano for his excellent announcing in the third quarter. And someone said we should be giving Paul a medal for not mentioning the Blue Devils once. For watching. Can I complete the sentence? Sure. Eastchester, government, access TV. That's all you guys let me say. 
you guys don't let me do any football around here. You give me all the commercials. But it is a pleasure to introduce Paul Votano. And uh, speaking of the Blue Devils, we do want to thank them for use of their camera uh, this evening, which uh, producer-director Mike Morgan is managing uh, very uh, capably. We'll be back with the kickoff with the Eagles ahead 29-6 to right away. The uh, scoreboard you're looking at is wrong. Uh, it's a new being scoreboard. <laughs> it's being run by a wishful thinking Pelham fan. The score is 29 for the Eagles and 6 for the Pelicans. Kicking off for the Eagles will be number 85, Ralph Zingaro. We're not sure what the holdup is. The four officials are conferring in the middle of the field. Referee Tony Fidario, umpire Frank Mucci, field judge Tony Dedario Jr., and headlinesman Andy LaBella might be discussing as to whether this game should be ended early because the rain is really pouring down. And as you can see, the field, which has held up so well up till now, is starting to get some wet spots and some puddles in the center areas. Uh, it is getting sloppy out there. Well, tomorrow, our colleague here in the booth, Mr. Bob Everett, is going to be out on that field. He'll be the uh, head uh, official for the uh, Mount Vernon New Rochelle game. Is that, uh, Bob? Do you do anything different in this kind of weather as an official? Jerry, you just you make sure you have a dry ball. <laughs> you ball and thank the ball boy. <laughs> and thank the ball boys. <laughs> Garrow kicking off. Picked up short on the 25-yard line by Anthony Cernicia. Brings it back about 10 yards, no, 15 yards to the 40-yard line for Pelham where they will put the ball in play first and 10. With in on the tackle for Eastchester was Ray Labrino. Join us again next week for Eastchester's homecoming. Byram Hills, highly rated in the state and number one in Westchester, Rockland. Hand off to Anthony Rizzo. Picks up about three yards, dropped by Ralph Zingaro and Frank Versailles. Also in on the tackle, Andrew Petrillo. East Chester looks like they're beginning to put some uh, white shirts in there, some players who haven't been in before. Pelham will be putting the ball in play second and 10 on their 42 yard line. Second and eight on their 42 yard line. Back to pass, Mike Bopp. Lots of time looking for his brother, TJ Bopp, but it is picked off by Eastchester. Mike Morgan, the fourth interception in this game for Eastchester. Morgan returns the ball to the 47 yard line, and that is Mike Morgan's second interception in this game. In on the tackle, T.J. Bopp, the intended receiver, and also helping out, 26, Anthony Teresiano. You know, Mickey Morgan seems to be the kind of player who just loves to play in this weather. Two weeks ago, we had the Eagles playing at Ardsley, and uh, Mickey had over 100 yards rushing and was the outstanding tackler in the ball game. Uh, Just under 10 minutes to go in the game with the East Chester Eagles leading 29 to 6. First and 10 on the 45 yard line for East Chester. Jeff Miller, just eligible for his first game with East Chester, transferring schools. Split wide to the right. And that's Mark Williams breaking loose around the left side before being forced out of bounds. Picking up about 18 yards to the Pelham 36 yard line. First down and 10 for Eastchester. That brings Mark's total to 82 yards to the game. Hey Len, let me uh, throw one out to either uh, Pete or Bob. They've been around. Is this uh, upcoming victory here tonight uh, guarantee a bowl uh, invitation to the Eagles? Either one of you want to take it? Well, a bowl invitation will really be dependent on what happens next week. 
Pitch back to Mark Williams is fumbled in this sloppy rain. Drop for a large loss by Mike Montaldo. East Chester will be facing a second down and about 25 yards to go. The Eagles have handled the ball well in spite of this wet weather, and that's one of the few times there was a miscue. Mike Morgan wide to the right, and Jeff Miller wide to the left for the Eagles. Esposito takes a snap from center Joe Luciano, and Mark Williams breaks loose up the middle. Stopped by Jeff Ritchie after a gain of about 17 yards. Brings up third down and eight for the East Chester Eagles. Ball spotted just inside the 35-yard line of Pelham. Checking into the lineup for East Chester, Jason DiGiacomo. Splitting out wide to the right. Esposito hands off to Mark Williams going over the left side. Stopped by John Carthon. Close to the first down. We're going to be, sh East Chester's going to be short by about two yards. Fourth down and two for the East Chester Eagles. Andrew Pacillo checks into the offensive lineup for East Chester. Morgan wide to the right, DiGiacomo wide to the left. And we have a flag on the play. It looks like an illegal procedure will be called against East Chester as Mark Williams tries to carry over the right side for no gain. Stopped by Joe Giacchino and Bradley Phillips. That penalty is against East Chester. Pelham will decline the penalty and take over the ball first and 10 on downs. With the score 29 to 6, we'd like to hear from you and let us know how you're enjoying the East Chester game of the week. This is our fourth football telecast. We've already done two soccer telecasts and we're glad to say that we've been following the Eagles undefeated in all of the games we've brought you. So we are the good luck charm. There's no doubt about that, Len. All right, Pelham putting the ball in play. First and 10 on their 30-yard line. Hand off to Anthony Rizzo over the right side for about a three-yard gain. Stopped by Ray Labrino. And Ray Flood also in on that tackle for the Eagles. Second down and eight for Pelham. Pass complete to Joe Giacchino, dropped behind the line of scrimmage by Ralph Zingaro and Mickey Morgan. That will bring up a third down and 12 for Pelham. In on defense for East Chester, John DiPatolo and checking in Joe Maraconda. Also in there, Willie Spinelli. So East Chester getting some of their other players into the lineup. Draw play to Anthony Rizzo. Stopped after about a five yard pickup by Ralph Zingaro. Okay, Pete Archiello. You're the Byram Hills coaching staff who no doubt are here somewhere in the stands. Do we see them? They're right, they're right down uh, below us filming the game, actually. What message do you take back, Pete? What do you work on this week? 
<laughs> you work on tackling. That's that's going to be your first uh, priority. Uh, Eastchester, they have to be concerned with Eastchester's team speed. Uh, Eastchester has shown them a lot, but Byram Hills has been here. They've seen them before. They checked them out last week against Nanuet. Eastchester's not shy. They'll throw everything at you, and they have to be ready for everything. Pelham punting on fourth down, doing the kicking for Pelham. John Cawthon, the ball comes down to the 31-yard line of Eastchester, taken by Mike Marone, who returns it for 11 yards up to the 41-yard line. Stopped there by number 89 for Pelham, Tim Reynolds. And Marone appears slightly shaken up on after that return. You know, Len, I was going to ask the question uh, to Bob Everett, what do you do if you're uh, Byron Mills, but he'd... Uh, Bring a good ball boy, I'm sure. <laughs> I think uh, Byram Hills has to go uh, back and uh, say, we're going to throw a lot of play action passes into our repertoire for next week. We're going to throw short, and we're also going to flood. Uh, I'm not sure that the East Chester defensive backs have rotated as well as they might ordinarily. But more, the most important thing I'd be doing all week, Jerry, we'd have one-on-one -on -one tackling drills because East Chester's speed with their backs, you better hit them the first down and take them down the first time or else they're gone for 5 to 15 yards. And this crew, I think we're going to go up to Byron Hills and scout them out for ourselves. You're going to be there tomorrow, aren't you, Pete? Yes, I, I will see them tomorrow. Uh, one thing about East Chester, though, Bob Everett uh, mentioned that they'll try. Uh, Byron Hills try to go with a lot of play action, things like that. The East Chester secondary has progressed quite a bit since Game One against Peekskill. They're a much better secondary unit. Uh, they're totally healthy now, which is something they weren't earlier this year. Four interceptions show you today that they have gelled a little bit. And uh, one thing that is going to be a key factor in that game next week, if Byron Hills has to rely on beating John DiArco defense defensively, meaning having his offense beat John's defense, he could be in for a long day, undefeated or not. I've got to point one thing out, Peter. One of the problems with coming down to Mount Vernon is that their, the ground crew is so efficient, you'll notice that all of the posts in the north end zone have now been removed, as well as the south end zone. In overtime games during bowl in in bowl situations, it can prove to be very interesting calls as one approaches the goal line. Four minute warning followed by a timeout call by Pelham. With the score East Chester 29, Pelham 6. East Chester Eagles will put the ball in play on their 41 yard line, first and ten. Four minutes remain left to play in the game. Okay, a lot of substitutes coming into the game for East Chester. Bobby Lee lining up at right end, and the snap is fumbled. And Pelham has recovered. Number 78 for Pelham with the fumble recovery, Vin Mangiafrida. Eagles bringing some substitutes in on defense, too. And for the first time, DJ Inzio at nose guard, linebacker Willie Spinelli returns to the game, having been in for one or two plays prior. And also coming in, John DiBetetto. Yeah, he's in there. Yeah. Bellum puts the ball in play, first and 10 on the East Chester 39. Handoff goes to Anthony Sinecchia around the right side. Nice gain of about seven or eight yards. Stopped by Rob DeLeo and Ray Labrino. Just two boys. With a little over three minutes left to go in the game, East Chester leading by a score of 29 to six. Pelham has a second down and four on the East Chester 33 yard line. Mike Bopp hands off to number 32, who entered the game for the first time, Ricky Cuomo. Stopped by Ralph Zingaro and John DiBetetto for the East Chester Eagles. Third down and about two for Pelham. as the clock keeps running. 
Mike Bopp. And we have flags all over the place. Uh, illegal procedure called against Pelham, and as we're in the waning moments of the game, we've just had our vote for uh, player of the game, and for Pelham, we have selected the ball boy, number 32, for his excellent job, and uh, that was insisted by Bob Everett, and for the Eastchester Eagles, the star of the game is Mickey Morgan. Mickey with two interceptions, a long touchdown run, and just excellent all-around play. Third down and about seven for Pelham. Mike Bopp under the center, a quarterback. Hands off to Joe Giacchino, throwing that halfback option that we saw earlier in the game. Completed to T.J. Bopp for what appears to be a first down. Tackled by Rob DeLeo for the Eastchester Eagles. So with just under two minutes left to play, Pelham has come up with another first down. The ball is marked at the Eastchester 27-yard line. While we're in the waiting moment, waning moments, Len, let me uh, review the scoring for the Eagles. They got on the scoreboard on a pass from Esposito to Burrow, 25 yards, following the fumble recovery by Frank Versace. Uh Morgan uh, took one in on a, uh, on a plunge, and then Morgan scored again on a 46-yard run. That was Ricky Cuomo carrying the ball for a big loss, I would say eight yard loss stopped by our man in the game for Eastchester, Mickey Morgan. Uh, Pelham came back with uh, one touchdown, uh, Ricky to T-Bop, and Eastchester scored twice again, Butch Burrow going in in uh, the third quarter and the fourth quarter on a uh, pass from Esposito to wrap up the scoring 29-6 Eagles. Hand off to Ricky Cuomo once again, stopped behind the line of scrimmage by number 60 for the Eastchester Eagles, Frank Versace. The clock continues to wind down. It appears that we're under a minute at this point in time, and Pelham has been backed up. They have a third down and about 23 yards to go as they'll put the ball in play on the Eastchester Eagle 40-yard line. Ryan Vaughn, number 90, checks into the lineup for Eastchester. And that marks the end of the game with the final score, Eastchester Eagles 29, the Pelham Pelicans 6. You have been watching Eastchester Eagles Game of the Week on Eastchester Government Access TV Cable 35 from muddy Mount Vernon Memorial Field. And as our spotter, Vince Caparasso, points out, the true football players like to play in the mud, at least he did, and certainly the Eagles did tonight. You have seen the Eagles defeat the Pelicans by the score of 29 to 6 in a very exciting contest. And the Eagles now are undefeated and alone on top of League 3A and will stay there regardless of what Byram Hills does tomorrow in as much as we had pointed out before, they're playing a non-league game. For our producer and director, Mike Morgan, our play-by-play -play announcers, Len Inzio and Paul Votano, our commentators, Pete Arciello and Bob Everett, our spotter, Vince Caparasso, this is Jerry Fishoff thanking you and reminding you to tune in for the rebroadcasts of this game throughout the week, and especially tune in next week for the homecoming versus Byram Hills in the battle. Of tape is not running right now. There's a little problem with the uh, tape. We'll get that straight down in just a moment. What we can tell you is that this week coming up, we'll have two ball games in particular that will go a long way into deciding which teams will get into the Section 1 ball games. As you will see on our Week in Review segment, Eastchester came up a winner to remain pat with Byram Hills. 
because those two teams will be going into next week's ball game undefeated and will be playing for the League A championship. We also have Roosevelt taking on Scarsdale. That will also go a long way in de deciding who will be in Class A's ball championship. Those two teams undefeated in League 1A. We understand the tape is ready, so let's roll it now as we take a look. Here it is, the Week in Review. White Plains won their second straight thanks to the 142 yards gained by fullback Mike Hodges. The senior tallied two touchdowns and a two-point conversion in the League 1A meeting. Mount Vernon head coach Tom Parry probably knew he didn't have the horses to match up with Dennis Kiernan's New Rochelle Huguenots in the 89th meeting between these two. And Parry was right. Sophomore Eric Bell rushed for 140 yards on 23 carries and scored three times, including the six-yard run in the fourth quarter. The Knights' only touchdown of the afternoon came on this pretty tough 36-yard scamper by fullback Maurice Hickman, also coming in the last period. Before all of this action, the New Rochelle defense did the job in stopping the Knights on their way to the 35-8 win. The Huguenots gained 254 yards rushing in gaining their fourth victory against only one loss. The Knights dropped to 0-6 this season. Also in League 1A on Saturday, Scarsdale traveled to Mamaroneck for what turned into a defense of Donnybrook. Dick Palladino's troops needed a win to keep pace with New Rochelle and Roosevelt for first place while Harry Peterson's Tigers were forced into the role of the spoiler. And it almost worked. Quarterback Kevin Walsh scored on a one-yard run in the fourth quarter, and Scarsdale held on for the 7-0 win. But both teams thwarted drives all afternoon long with their hard-nosed defenses. The Tigers played much of the afternoon in the Scarsdale backfield while the Raider defense zeroed in on quarterback Marcel Galagani's tosses, picking off three passes in the first half alone. Scarsdale improved to 5-1 overall, their fifth straight win, and remain unbeaten in the league. Marinick is now 2-4 and 1-3 and and in League 1A. In a rare crossover game, Class C Westlake easily defeated Class B Woodlands 28-6. The Wildcats even their record at 3-3 three three, while the Falcons dropped their third straight. Under fall-like skies, the Rye Garnets resumed another one of those neighborhood rivalries when they met Rich Albanizio's Porchester Rams. The Rams were up and down this year at 2-3, and three, but Dino Gar's club was still unbeaten and ranked number one in Class B. And the opening drive proved why. The Garnets marked 75 yards in 10 plays, and Scott Newman finished with the game's first score, an 18-yard run. In the second quarter, the Garnets put together a 60-yard drive, and Trey Flood finished that march off with this 11-yard run. It was the seniors' third touchdown in two games. After a fumbled punt, the Rams made the game interesting when Scott Davenport pushed it in from one yard out, but Rye led 14 to six. And any doubt as to what the outcome would be would be answered on the last play of the half when Steve Riebling threw a bullet that found Mike Fitzgerald in the end zone for the Garnets' third score in the half. Those two hooked up again in the third quarter on a 17-yard completion, and Rye had their sixth win of the year, 28-14 over the Rams. The balanced offensive attack had Newman with 96 yards, Flood with 84, and Riebling throwing for another 98 yards. Over in Class C, the Eagles aren't losing, but they didn't put up a win either. Dobbs and the Tigers played to a 7-all tie in Dutchess County Saturday. The Eagles are 1-1-1 one, one, and one over their last three games. The Red Devils had little trouble with League 3A foe Edgemont. Beekskill improved to 4-2, and two, while the Panthers are still in search of their first win in over two seasons. Friday night at Memorial Field, Eastchester and Pelham began the annual Colonial Cup game under less than perfect conditions. Charlie Lightsey's Pelicans came into the League 3A meeting with only one win, while John DiArco had composed a masterpiece with his unbeaten Eagles 5-0 and 4-0 in league play. Mickey Morgan opened the scoring in the first on a three-yard run, giving Eastchester an 8-0 lead. Morgan also scored on a 46-yard run in the quarter, and the Eagles led 15-0 after one. After an interception, Pelham got into the game when quarterback Chris Rickey came off the bench and hit T.J. Bopp with this five-yard TD pass on a fourth and goal count. It was 15-8 at the half, but as the rains came harder, the Eagles turned it on. Butch Burrow scored twice in the second half on a four-yard run and a seven-yard pass from Lawrence Esposito. The Eagles remained unbeaten at 5-0 in the conference, setting up next week's league championship game against Byram Hills with the 29-6 win over Pelham. Broncos full three this weekend over Pearl River can clinch the league championship outright. In League 3A, those two are going to hook up this coming Saturday, as I mentioned. East Chester at 5-0, Byram Hills at 4-0. The Bobcats with three 
more league games to go. Eastchester with just two more. And then last but not least, watch how true this bounce is. Right up and pink right in there. Eastchester recovers the fumble. They went on to score a touchdown that in the second half of their ball game. And now we have for you what could be the Eastchester 6-0. They're going at it this weekend. Chris Chulo's going to be there. Briarcliff Bears at 6-0, winner over Pleasantville this past weekend. So the Panthers stay right where they were despite the loss. 14-0 the final there. The Panthers now at 4-2. And, and the Irvington Bulldogs get into the top five for the first time this year. By virtue of their 10-0 win over Valhalla, they are at 4-1. and one. So you've got the top fives. Now we got to find out who's playing who this weekend. So let's do it. Class A, a bunch of 1A ball games. New Rochelle taking on Lincoln, the number five team. There's one of the big ones, Scarsdale versus North Ro or versus Roosevelt, ranked number one. And uh, we've got White Plains against number four, North Rockland. Mamaronick is at Mount Vernon. And there you see the two ball games in the CHSFL, Stepanak at Holy Trinity. Iona Prep under the lights at Memorial Field in Mount Vernon. 7.30 start against Nazareth, a double-A division ball game. In Class B, two games we take a look at, as always. Number one, Rye. They can clinch the League 2D championship with a win over Pearl River at Nugent Stadium. Woodlands is at Sleepy Hollow. That's also a 2D ball game. Three wins between those two schools. And over in Conference 3, League 3A. What else can we say? Number two, Eastchester against number one, Byram Hills. It is for the League 3A championship. Number five, Irvington meets Croton. That's a League 3B game. The Bulldogs are a half a game behind Briarcliff for the league lead. Archley will take on Peekskill at home. The uh, Red Devils in third place in League 3A. Westlake at Edgemont, that's also a 3A ball game, as is Nanuet at Pelham. The Golden Knights are on a two-game win streak. In Class 3C, Rynek is at Bronxville. The Broncos are tied with Dobbs Ferry for first place, undefeated in the league. And uh, we also have Tuckahoe at Millbrook, that being an interconference ball game. So there you have the schedule, minus one game. And that's our next Cable 3 high school football game of the week. And once again, we're going to return to Yazo Memorial Field at Gould Park for a League 3C matchup. The Hastings Yellow Jackets winless so far this season at 0-4. They're going to be taking on Frank Violante's Dobbs Ferry Eagles. They were a record of 4-1-1. But remember, the last three weeks for the Eagles, they have gone one one and won. Joe Vaccaro, incidentally, in his first season as the head coach for the Yellow Jackets, and we'll have that game for you. As always, Saturday night at 8 o'clock, same day coverage, Sunday at 10 a.m., Tuesday, the 1st of November at 7.30. So there you have it. The Week in Review, the Plays of the Week. We also have the Game of the Week and what's next up on the schedule. I think that's just about enough football that you can handle for a half an hour. The lights went out. The teleprompter broke, the videotape machine broke, so everything is copacetic. And we'll hope you'll come right back here next Wednesday night and see if we can do it all over again. Extra Points, live here on Cable 3. I'm John Crudio. Thanks very much for watching. See you later, everybody.